What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I organize my beats, how I name them, and I'm gonna be showing you some cool automation tricks that you should try as far as organizing your beats is concerned. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is the file structure that I've come up with. I have an external drive, so an SSD, and I have an exported beats folder that I have on my drive. So all of my beats go into that folder, but I have folders within folders. So here's the structure. I have the year, and then I have the month for that year. Uh, let me just, let me show you. Let's go straight into the folder and show you that structure. So here are the months that I have for 2021. And what I like to do is I like to put the number, so like one for January, two for February, right before the month so that I can see everything in order. So if I wanted to sort by name, all I have to do is press this little button up here on the Mac. You could do the same thing on Windows and it will organize the folders from January all the way down to December. Another thing I'd like to point out is I like to keep maybe four years or so on my external drive because I don't want it to get too cluttered and too full pretty much. I only have one terabyte of storage on this drive, but I keep everything else backed up to my Google Cloud. So that's why I just have beats from 2020 to 2023. There are a ton of beats on my Google Drive, just not here. But anyway, I like to organize my folders this way because let's think of a scenario. I can't say that everybody has gone through this before, but I've been in a situation where I was scrolling through my gallery and then I saw myself like jamming out to a beat that I made a while ago. So I was like, okay, I, I made this beat on like September 2nd or something. So I would look at the year on that video, the date, whatever go to that folder on my drive and then I'd be like, okay, this is the name of the beat. And then I'd be like, you know what? This artist that I was talking to the other day could probably vibe out to this beat too. So let me send it to them. Guys, this is a really quick and easy way to get to files that you need to access. That's just how I do it. And then another case to use this file naming structure would be like, if you wanna go back to 2020 or go back to 2021 and see your progress for that year, you could easily see it that way. It's really great organization and I hope that you guys find this very useful. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is file nomenclature or how I like to name my files when I export them. Before I name my beat, I like to think of the vibe that I'm going for. So if I wanna... So if I wanna go for a floaty beat, I like to name it something like clouds in the sky or flowers in the wind or something like that, right? So I have an idea of what the beat sounds like before I even open it. But there are times where I'm making a beat and I'm like, okay, I want it to be floaty, but then it sounds completely different and no but then it sounds completely different. So in that case, I might have the project named one thing and then I name the beat another. And that can kind of confuse things. So sometimes it doesn't play out in the way that you want it to. You go in wanting to make a vibey beat, but then you end up making something like super hard hitting or whatever. And then you're like, dang, I don't want to name it clouds in the sky because this has nothing to do with clouds in the sky. But the name of the beat doesn't have to give off the vibe that it sounds like. But anyway, I try to go in knowing what I want to make. So name of the beat is the vibe, right? Sometimes, hopefully. And then the next thing I like to do is document the BPM of the beat. So if you and the homies are like collabing on a beat and they don't know the BPM, it's gonna be hard to drag that beat into their session and figure out where the BPM is. Like, if they know what they're doing, of course they can find it, but it's just gonna take longer and nobody has time for that. And the last thing I like to do is put produced by and then my name. That's how I like to name my beats. But the naming gets more intense. I'm about to show you guys a really cool app that I discovered a couple of days ago, and it's called Hazel. I'm pretty sure Windows has something similar, if not better than this, but this is what I like to use for my MacBook. So basically what Hazel does is it automates your folders and your file structure and all of that cool stuff. It's basically a really amazing organization tool. This is gonna change the game for me. I haven't really used it in depth yet, but I will be using it in depth very soon. I have the trial, there's a 14 day trial. I plan on buying it, but let me show you guys just a quick overview of what it does. So I have my exported beats folder here, and this is the folder that I want the automations to run on. I have a file automation for my subfolders. The automation can't run on the files if there are folders within folders until you create this subfolders automation. So I have the years, and then I have the months, right? And then it goes into the files that I want it to run the automations on. So that's the first thing I had to create. I personally want to organize my beats by genre. So I have R&B tags, I have a trap tag, I have a hip hop tag, and then I have a miscellaneous tag. And I also do a lot of remixes. So I have a remixes and collabs tab. I'm just gonna show you the R&B tag really quick and just show you an example of how it works. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if the name contains this special character, so parentheses are parentheses. Then I want it to do the following automations. 
So here's my beat, right? And I wanna go and export it. I get all my settings ready and stuff like that. And then I go to press export and then the special character comes into play. So I would say, okay, this is an R&B beat. I'm gonna put R in parentheses because R, R&B. Then I'm gonna say, okay, the name of the beat is Shadows. And then I also wanna put the BPM and that's it. Remember how I said that I wanted to put produced by? Let me show you. So I would save this to my export of beats 2023 march whatever folder okay so it exported right so i go i don't know if you guys saw that but i go to my march folder i know i haven't made a lot of beats this month i'm struggling but anyway i put the r in front of the file name and then i had the file name the bpm and stuff like that and then it also included the produced by k sharp so let me show you let me go back and show you the automation steps so the first step i have is to add the rmb tag and it adds that tag there so if i go down to my tags and i go to rmb that beat is there and the next thing i want it to do is rename the file name so i don't want the the r parentheses stuff in my file name that looks very tacky to me so i say okay i want to use the name i want to rename it with the name and the extension obviously but i also want to replace the text so i don't want this uh you know this stuff that i showed you earlier and there's also a space in there so i added a space and then i want to replace it with empty text right and then after that, I wanna add the extension. After I do that step, I rename it again with the right pattern. So the name is back to normal, but I also wanna add produced by and then K sharp in my case. So I have this little string text in here and then I have the extension at the very end. And it also gives you an example of what it would look like at the bottom, so that's super useful. So when I'm working on a collab with someone, I still wanna put produced by k -Sharp, which is my producer name or whatever. Once I do that, I usually go back and add whoever else worked on that beat too. These are the three genres I typically make, so that's why I have tags for those. But you know, it's cool to have a miscellaneous tag because you never know what kind of vibe you're gonna be in that day. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how I plan on organizing my beats and how I plan on naming them and things of that nature. I do wanna really dive in and figure out how to automate some other things with Hazel. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but yeah, that's all I have for today. So thanks for watching. I hope this stuff is useful for you. It's useful for me and I can't wait to start um, using the tagging feature and stuff like that. So I'll let you know how it goes. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully it goes well for you too. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.